So we've talked about the various applications for installation values within our homes at Rebuild the Block, but many of the questions and comments that come through revolve around the cost associated with these types of applications. And today I wanna to go through the four different types of installations that are commonly utilized within building here in the States and the overall cost associated with each application. Let's get to it. So the first thing I have to do is I have to set a benchmark for what that cost is associated to. And today we're gonna to be talking about the cost associated to a board foot. And the board foot is a 12 by 12 square by one inches thick. The reason that we wanna utilize this as a measurement is to be able to create some consistency that you could put pen and paper to, to be able to determine the cost effectiveness of each of these applications that we're about to cover. The first is gonna be blown in. Now this is gonna be a pretty common installation method and it's gonna be seen in homes over the last few decades. This fiberglass blown in product is easy to install and is one of the standard materials that's typically used in remodeled homes that have a vented attic space. Overall, the cost associating with sealing the attic space and trying to spray foam a cavity that's already been sheetrocked is usually impossible, not cost effective because of the additional work that's needed. As you might already imagine, this is gonna be the most cost effective solution and it's gonna range between 50 cents a board foot to a dollar a board foot. And that's really gonna be dependent on the grade of material that's utilized within this application, as well as the difficulty of installation. On a new home, if you were doing blown in installation, the attic cavities are large and spacious, which makes the work a lot easier. In a remodel situation, it might be a lot harder and more labor intensive to be able to get that blown in application to the proper thickness and some of the tight cavities that they might be dealing with during day of installation. The second standard installation material that's utilized is gonna be fiberglass batting. Now, most people are pretty familiar with this product as it's seen in any local Home Depot or Lowe's, usually with a big pink panther on it. But there's two types of batting installation. There's the standard full fiberglass bat, and then there's a fiberglass bat with either a paper or a synthetic paper liner that allows you to be able to staple for all the ceiling applications either at the roof deck or just above the ceiling sheetrock. This application is super simple. This can also be easily completed by someone that's looking to take on the project themselves. The cost associated with this type of application is gonna be somewhere between 70 cents and $1.20 per board foot. And it's really gonna be dependent on the two items that was mentioned previously, which would be the quality and thickness of the material being utilized, as well as the complexity of the install, dependent on whether it's a new build Go check out our previous video to be able to understand why we use fiberglass batting insulation in all the interior walls for soundproofing and more comfortable living throughout the home. As we move on to the third most commonly used insulation here in the States is gonna be spray foam. Now, spray foam has been used for a couple of decades, but it's definitely taken over a fair amount of market share, especially in new construction. Not only does it provide a great insulation barrier, especially for exterior walls, but it also helps to create a sealed air barrier that allows you to be able to meet some of the code requirements that we deal with today in modern day building. What's actually surprising is that spray foam has come down in price considerably over the years. And depending on the region and the material utilized, you're gonna range somewhere between 50 cents and a dollar a square foot, which is roughly in the range of a good batting installation. One of the things that's worth mentioning is that Open cell spray foam is gonna be most commonly used in new construction or full gut and remodels where you have access to all the framing members and is very rarely used as a retrofit option. So let's move on to the fourth and the least commonly used residential application, which is gonna be closed cell foam. Now closed cell foam actually has a little bit more benefit and applications that are utilized in the commercial space. And a lot of times that'll be used for exterior roof details However, there are a few applications that it could be utilized within residential building. The first area that will be utilized is on the exterior applications of our roof decks, particularly on the ones that are flat and have a parapet, which also provides some additional insulation value, but allows you to be able to actually walk on the surface because it's a lot more durable, because instead of being light and airy, like a cloud where you could kind of poke through it, you ultimately have a very stiff and rigid closed cell that works great for exterior applications. The second area that we've used it for in our builds is gonna be for a wine cellar. Ultimately in a wine cellar where you're actually basically creating a room that is essentially a refrigerator, you have to be able to create a vapor barrier and the, the open cell foam simply isn't the right application for these very customizable spaces. 
As you might imagine, this is one of the most expensive applications in residential building for insulation, and is gonna range between $1.50 and $2.50 a board foot based on the overall density of the material being used. Now, I know some of you out there might be thinking that those ranges are a little bit larger than what they'd like, but a lot of that has to do with the overall application and mostly the labor component involved. The reality is, in a house like we're sitting, you're gonna have large vaulted ceilings that are gonna create a need for scaffolding and additional setup, as well as the amount of glass that's associated within this build will create more prep that's going to increase the overall cost and scope of work for our trade partner. And one of the biggest items that plays a factor is whether it's new construction and you have access to everything or whether it's a remodel where you might have some tight tolerances and some additional complexities when it comes to installing a blown in or a batting application. However, with some of these basic figures as well as a rundown of why we utilize the various types of insulation within different applications within the home. We hope that you'll be able to select the right fit with any of the projects that you're undertaking, whether you be a builder or a homeowner looking to renovate or build a custom home. We appreciate you following along. Hit that subscribe button below. And as always, have a great day.